Alfred, do you because you have a lot of tattoos going going up your uh, your arm here. I mean, do you get a lot of crap from people? Do people just look at you and they immediately go, "Oh, all right, gangbanger, thug. He's he's no good because he's got tattoos all over." <laughs> do you, Schmonty? No, right. pe- people, no people. Like, people, <laughs> people, people will look at people will look at me too. Oh, I'll bro. get bad looks. I like to wear black t shirts and I have right tattoos. Alfred, does anybody look at you and just think you're the lowest scum on the earth? You're a piece of crap. Never had a job. The only thing was missing was Mexican. Dude. <laughs> Listen, yeah, I've yeah, been in Arizona for four years now, so profiling has just yeah. become a I natural thing, and I'm eyes. sorry. And I'm in sorry. Eyes, he said Mexican. I met I Sheriff thought. Joe once, I and thought. he touched me. It's like it, it transferred. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> No, but do, yeah. do, do, do you do you know do you know what I mean? Like, how do you do you roll with that? Do you mess with people? Look, no, I don't mess with. I'm a big sissy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten in a fight since the third grade, bro. <laughs> Did you win that one? I lost. <laughs> I lost. <laughs> she was she was honest. big though, though. At least he's on. Yeah, she was a big girl, so <laughs> we totally get why you lost. <laughs> does uh, Gabriel ever share those cakes that he gets? Because when he came he in, he does. got he got two cakes in a ten minute period, and I'm like, man, does someone bring us a cake? <laughs> a German chocolate. Please, like we like we like chocolate cake too. Yeah, yeah. he does. We did a, a college together uh, back in April, and there were like two cake. There were I think there were more than two, but two cakes made their way back to the dressing room, and he was offering everybody like the the staff at the college the students everybody that was back there with us he's really he he shares very well with others <laughs> yeah has he he's slimming down isn't he yep, because i had some is. friends in michigan that saw him and said man he's looks like a different person almost yeah, he's, he's medium really fluffy he's not he's big fluffy fluff. anymore he's not he's not super duper fluffy yeah he's like he's still fluffy but he's like medium fluffy <laughs> which is good. good medium fluffy is good he's doing it for a lot of reasons <laughs> and people are really supporting it which yeah. i like people are you know getting into the fact that he's taking very good care of himself and that's good for him it yeah. encourages him i feel like when the fans are like hey you look great like yeah nobody wants to be like you should be fluffier like that's, yeah that's not a good way to go guys like, so stop bringing him cake yeah right? please uh, could you stop with the cakes <laughs> maybe some carrot sticks or something yeah. else that he likes yeah he likes running shoes <laughs> <laughs> Stairmasters in running yeah. shoes. Guys, bring up, so, bring up one of those exercise balls. That would be great. <laughs> Just doing some balance yeah. squats before his set, <laughs> strengthening the core. Now, are you guys under the belief? Um, because I don't think Chris Farley would have been as funny as he was if he was as skinny as like David Spade. Yeah, the Matt Foley mm-hmm. character. Yeah, wouldn't some have people been that great. are just funnier when they're bigger. Yep. And I, I, I don't know if that's true with because uh, Gabriel's pretty funny. Either way, and a lot yeah. of his jokes center around his weight, but uh, do you think that's going to hit him if he loses all the weight? People are going to be like, yeah, he's, he's not fluffy anymore. No. He's really not fluffy. I think I've worked enough with him, and I think so has Alfred, that I, we both know he's more of a storyteller, and he's very conversational. I don't think the stories will ever stop. I think what will maybe happen is a natural evolution of like, okay, now that I'm in shape, I have to talk about being in shape. Like, yeah. now I have to talk about this. And he'll talk about that journey, which I think is every comic has an evolution. If you watch, I'm a comedy nerd. So I've watched everybody from George Carlin, Brett Butler, Richard Pryor. I am, I am a student of comedy and all of them had a natural evolution from when they first started. If you watch early Carlin, he was very silly, very goofy. And then he got into doing more political satire and then eventually became somebody who was almost, almost like a preacher quality to him standing up there talking and doing amazing things like one special he opened with a poem so you're looking at it like this dude really evolved and i think that's what's naturally happening with gabe is Mm -hmm. that he's just evolving to be the awesome person that he is don't tell him (laughs) i said this but i think you're funnier than him (laughs) oh i'm gonna tell him (laughs) don't (laughs) no because he will come back we won't get any more cakes (laughs) (laughs) i'm totally gonna tell him that you said that and (laughs) he won't remember me Oh, that one, oh. that one twelve-year-old radio guy the, <laughs> over kid. in the recycled like, Denny's. Looks like take your son to work day. Yeah, yeah him. He was. He, he's the one who like, like, wait, more what? Than you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>